Hello, in this video I'll show you how to create a matching game using the drag and drop API. The game is you take the English phrase and match it with the Spanish phrase, and then the two will disappear. And if you get everything right, and you'll get a message saying well done, and then you can play again. This HTML drag and drop API there's very little HTML that you have to write to make it work. It does require quite a bit of JavaScript with these drag and drop events here. We've got drag enter, drag leave, over, start, drop. We're going to use these five. I've seen tutorials that use drag and drop to sort a list or to drag a file, different things like that. But I wanted to switch it up a little bit with this game. Since this video is going to be mostly about the JavaScript, I'm not going to recode all this HTML or the CSS. I will recode the JavaScript completely though, step by step. With the HTML here, as you can see, we've got the heading for Spanish matching game. We've got the instructions here, two paragraphs, one in English, one in Spanish. And then in our main element here, we've got a class container, two separate divs, because this is going to be CSS grid with two columns. So we have two divs for each column. An ordered, unordered list with the class draggable list and five list items. And in the second div, it's the same thing. Unordered list with draggable list, class, and five list items. The difference in the IDs is these English IDs, we've got E1 through E5 for English 1 through English 5, and then the S for Spanish, but the reason these are not in order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is because I don't want to put the correct choice right next to the correct choice. So I, I, the English, what's your name? I don't want to put como te llamas right next to it. And that makes the game a little bit too easy. So we'll put these out of order. And you can create this in JavaScript too. And that might be something that you want to do if you're coding along and you want to do something more advanced and you could make these show up with JavaScript. In fact, you could even make them show up in a different order every time if you wanted to. But I'll keep it simple in this video just to introduce Drag and Drop API using it to create a matching game. Under the main, we've got this second div for our in message. And it's not going to sh be showing initially, only if you win the game. So we've got well done, and then We've got six rows here in this table. We've got the header, and then we've got the matching phrases. So I'll show you what that looks like again. What's your name? I'll go ahead and, and win this really quick. So there's our table. And then we have the button, play again. So if you wanna play again, you click the button. And this is all happening with JavaScript. I'll quickly show you the CSS, and I'll include the code in the description also. So you can either pause and rewrite this if you want to, or you can get the link in the description, get the code there, or you can just make up your own. But I will be coding step-by-step -step the JavaScript, as I mentioned. In the CSS, we've got our container here, 960, max width, auto margins, some colors in our body we're changing, changing the font, centering text. As I mentioned, we're using grid with two columns. Draggable list, just adding some padding and styling each individual list item. This over class is used whenever you drag one item, when it's over a valid drop zone, this over class is going to be added. And when you exit it, it's going to be removed. So that's what this over class is for. And we're styling the table, as you can see there, and styling the button. And the in message, so after you beat the game, the message that you see. The, it will display none initially, and then we'll display block if you win the game. And then for the JavaScript, 
I'm going to delete all this and we'll go step by step for the JavaScript. First thing we're going to need is a constant. We're going to call this draggable list items. We'll use query selector all for this. Draggable list is the class and we want every list item right here. So we've got five list items under draggable list here and then this same draggable list class we also have five list items here. So that's a total of we're going to be using five events. We have ten list items and we need five event listeners. So we would end up having to write 50 separate event listeners. And imagine if you had more choices. So if you had 20 choices here, we've got five English, five Spanish. If you have, if you had 20, then you'd be writing 100 event listeners. So that's why we, we want this constant in query selector all. And I'll show you how we're going to use that shortly. One more constant. Whenever you beat the game, this in message. We need a few other variables. We'll give it a current phrase being dragged. As soon as you start dragging a phrase, we want to know the ID of that phrase because we're going to have to match the current one that you're dragging with wherever you drop it to see if the two phrases are a good match. So we'll call that selected ID. And the same thing with wherever we decide that we want to drop the phrase. And we need to keep track of how many correct phrases we have because once you have five, that means you won the game. And as I mentioned, we will need 50 different event listeners. So we're going to create a function for that. And we'll call it add event listeners right here function. And this constant we just created here, draggable list items, we're going to use that. I'm going to create a for each. For each item, we'll use an arrow function. Add event listener. And we'll, we'll name the functions exactly or very closely to what the events are called. All right, there are, we have five events there and reminder of what these are. Drag item enters a valid drop. When you leave a valid drop target, when you're over a valid drop target, as soon as you start dragging an item and then whenever you drop an item. We have our event listeners. Now let's create the functions for those. Selected ID equals this dot ID. So as soon as we start dragging an item, we want to know what that ID is. And then whenever we enter a valid drop zone, we want to add the class list of over. And then we want to do the exact opposite. Whenever we exit or whenever we leave the drop zone, 
You want to remove that class. And we're going to use the event for drag over. And the only thing that we want to do is prevent the default behavior. Because the default behavior is not to allow the drop. Now there's going to be more logic in this one. These are all pretty simple. But in this one, the first thing we want to do is the drop target ID. We're going to be comparing. If I start dragging, I want to know what the ID is in this versus the ID where I drop it. And the next thing I want to do is I want to change whenever you drag one item over a valid drop zone or valid drop target, it changes color. But let's say it's incorrect and it doesn't disappear. It's going to be showing dark still. So I want to remove that over class. Next thing is, how do we know if it matches? We need a function for that. We'll call that check for match. And we need the selected ID, which I'll just call selected, and the drop target ID, which we'll just call drop target. And using a switch statement, looking at the selected ID, we're going to have different cases. So for the English one, if the English one phrase is drop somewhere, we're going to use ternary. I think the ternary sometimes, if you've never used it before, when you look at it, it could be a little bit confusing, but I think this is going to be a, the cleanest way to write this switch statement. So we're going to return drop target equals S1. If it does equal S1, return true else return false. We need several of these to four more. Create a little bit more space here to make it neater. English one, so on down the line. Five. And then make sure these line up with the Spanish. So the way this works, check for match. E1, if E1 is dropped in S1, we return true, else we return false. Meaning, if this E1, what's your name? is dropped in S1, como te llamas, return true. All right, now that we have this function, we'll do a default. Now that we have this function, we can use it in this drag drop. So we'll say if check for match selected ID drop target ID. So as the arguments here, we're going to be sending the selected ID and the drop target ID. And we got those from the drag drop function and the drag start function there. And this is a shorthand way of saying if true, if you just say if check for match, because it's going to either return true or false. 
So if it's true, and we want to say document, selected ID, So we're going to hide it. If it's if it's true, then we hide it. I'm going to do drop target ID here. So if I drag something over to the correct match, then I want to hide both of those. And we'll increment the matching counter as well. Let's save that. And it should be all we need. Let's see if this game is working now. I'll show you this really quick. We'll open up the console. Drag leave is not defined, so 71. Let's see what that's about. Drag, leave. All right. So as soon as I pick up an item here, let's create a, let's log something to the console. So drag, start. As soon as I pick something up, I should see what the ID is. So what's your name? Should be E1. So there it is. As soon as I pick something up, and then when I drop it somewhere, I should also see the drop target ID. So S2. All right, that seems to be working fine. We don't need those consoles. Let's win the game here and see what happens. All right, nothing happened. Everything disappeared. So we need something else to happen in this drag and drop. If we get five in a row, since we have this matching counter here, We'll say, let's check if matching counter equals five in message. Let's try this again. There it is. Play again. Now, in order to play again, we need to create a function for playing again. So we'll do that right down here. We'll reset this matching counter to zero. Then we'll hide the message. And then this draggable list items will loop through again. Instead of hiding everything, we'll show everything. We hit each one, and you got it right. And now we're going to display everything since you want to play the game again. So we'll use another arrow function here. And then we'll use the item.id and change it from none to block. Again, okay, that's working. Now, one final thing we can do. You see, we can only drag from English to Spanish. But what if we want to drag the Spanish phrase over to the English phrase? That's not working. So 
in order to fix that, we need to create one more function. We have this check for match, and we're, we're checking from English to Spanish. We just need to create another function and then add that logic into drag and drop. But before I show you that, I do want to mention something here. I highly recommend Torogos Language Academy. If you want to take online lessons, or if you know somebody who wants to take lessons, who thought about taking lessons, you can get the first lesson free, you get a consultation, then you get a free 30-minute lesson with a native-speaking Spanish teacher. These are trained professionals, and you can focus on grammar, you can focus on something specific, whatever industry you work in, or you can just have casual conversations. You can take online lessons at whatever time works best for you. You can choose the teacher you want. You can take lessons on a regular schedule or take them every once in a while, whenever it's convenient for you. Now, in order to make this work from Spanish to English, what we need to do is duplicate this function. Let's check for match. We'll call it check for match two. And we just need to do the opposite of what we did before. So we're going to be looking at S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. See if it matches with the English. And then we need to add that logic in here. So if, and then else if, check for match two. So we can just copy this whole thing. If check for match two, yep, we don't need to change anything because we still want to hide those two list items if it's correct, if we return true, and all the logic is going to be in this function here. So if I save this, what's your name? Como te llamas? Lo siento. Now we can go either way. There it is. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.